Dan Gibalisco here to talk about a tuned field strength meter for HF, that's high frequencies, meaning the short wave radio bands, roughly 3 to 30 megahertz. A viewer recently asked me about component values for a field strength meter, so I've decided to offer this basic design. The heart of the field strength meter is a radio frequency diode. That's the kind of diode that you would use in a crystal set radio receiver, for example, or at other RF applications. Not a rectifier diode that has too much capacitance. A microammeter, the more sensitive the better, <coughs> and a bypass capacitor across that microammeter to help smooth out the uh, pulsating DC that you're going to get. Uh, 0.01 microfarads is a good component value here. This is a little whip antenna and these are chassis grounds that's uh, probably a small handheld device so that a little metal box that you hold in your hand and these are the chassis grounds to that metal box. The frequency at which this device is most sensitive is determined by the inductance L and the capacitance C. When you tune this circuit right here to resonance at the frequency that you want, then this field strength meter will have uh, exaggerated sensitivity at that frequency at the expense of others so that you can kind of choose the frequency of interest and the viewers frequency of interest was 10 megahertz. Ham radio operators happen to have a uh, an allocation near that frequency that's right in the middle of the short wave radio band. Now what are these actual values here? I de decided to calculate those values and find out for 10 megahertz. Now Remember the formula for the resonant frequency F of a tuned inductance capacitance circuit. Here is that formula. 1 divided by 2 pi times the square root of LC. 1 over that entire quantity. 2 pi is roughly equal to 6.2832. The frequency here is expressed in megahertz. If we express the frequency in megahertz, then we need to use microhenries for the inductance value L and microfarads for the capacitance value C. So I decided to find out if I plugged the number 10 in here for 10 megahertz, what I would have to have for these values. And I came up with these values based on an educated guess that I would want the inductance L to equal about 10 micro henries. When I did that, I came up with a value of C that worked out to about 25 pico farads. Now, that was, when I calculated C in microfarads, I got 0 0.000025 microfarads for this value right here, which translates into 25 picofarads. Now, if you use a variable capacitor here that has a maximum capacitance of about 100 picofarads, that would be a, a variable capacitor. The minimum probably about five picofarads. If you use that for this variable capacitor, you should be able to tune pretty much over the entire HF part of the radio spectrum with this tuned field strength meter. Now I haven't actually built this thing, so I can't vouch for its performance, but in theory, it certainly should work. It's not terribly sensitive, but you might think of it as an RF sniffer. 
You can use it in your ham radio station, for example, to see whether or not your transmission line is radiating too much. You don't want that. You, wanna, might, you might want to find out what is this weird interfering source of, uh, of, of distraction on your shortwave radio at 10 megahertz. You can use this circuit to find that, hopefully, if it's right around your house. So that is just a summary of a tuned field strength meter basic design for the high frequency part of the ham radio spectrum where I and other amateur radio operators like to hang out in large numbers. My call sign W1GV. You'll find me mainly, well you'll find me occasionally on the 10 me, uh, megahertz band, but more often on 14 18, 21, 24, and 28 megahertz using CW, Morse code, Stangibalisco ham radio operator W1GV, signing off for now saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long. And that's how CW operators say that. Did it da did da.